Hello viewers, I am Dheeraj. Welcome to my channel. Please subscribe to this channel for regular tech updates. In this video, I am going to discuss Jupyter Notebook's autocomplete and intelligence feature along with menu shortcuts. Autocomplete or word completion is a feature in which an application like Jupyter Notebook suggests the rest of a word or code a user is typing. Therefore, IntelliSense or autocompletion is a functionality provided by Jupyter Notebook programming environment to help you complete the code quickly and efficiently. There are three main advantages of using autocompletion. Firstly, autocompletion is effectively helping in time saving. For example, we will not have to type long variables. Secondly, it also helps in reducing bugs as it helps in avoiding mistyped code. Thirdly, autocomplete feature helps in learning relevant part of the programming language quickly without mastering the full language as we can use the methods and attributes of the object without looking at the corresponding documentation. Let's get started. In case you are writing Python code, in Jupyter Notebook, autocomplete means it will show the possible code you would like to write based on the language syntax. Autocompletion or intelligent code completion is a convenient way to access names and descriptions of functions of a programming language like Python in the context of what the developer has already typed. IntelliSense suggests which variable or function the user most likely wants. Like if you are using NumPy, it may show you names of all the methods available for NumPy in the environment. You do not need to install anything to use the Jupyter Notebook's auto completion feature. This feature comes automatically with the standard Jupyter Notebook installation. To start using autocomplete feature, you just have to start typing your variable name and hit the tab button on your keyboard. As shown in the image, the user has typed pandas, alias, pd and dot. After typing the dot, you just need to press tab and the notebook will show all the available methods of pandas as shown in the image. This is a simple example of autocomplete or intelligence. Let us discuss another example of autocomplete or intelligence. Here, rather than method's name, we would like to check the possible correct syntax of a method. For this, we need to write the method name and opening bracket after that. Then, press shift and tab together. This will show you the function signature. A simple example is shown in the image below. We have imported pandas as pd. Then we are typing pd.read underscore excel method and opening bracket. Note that you do not need to type the closing bracket of this method. Then we are pressing the shift and tab together. After that, the notebook will show the signature of the read underscore excel function of pandas library. Let us discuss what is a dashboard for Jupyter Notebook. The dashboard acts as the home page for all the notebooks. When you first start the notebook server on your machine, the browser will open the notebook dashboard as shown in the image. Dashboard's main purpose is to display the notebooks and files in the current directory. For example, on your screen, there is a screenshot of the dashboard page for the examples directory. To create a new notebook, click on the new button at the top right of your dashboard. Then select a kernel from the drop down. The kernels in the list depends on the various software installed on the server. Therefore, some of the kernels in the image may not exist for you. Notebooks and files can be uploaded to the current directory by dragging a notebook file and dropping onto the notebook list. If you open an existing notebook or create a new one, 
you will see the notebook user interface. This user interface allows us to run the code and author notebook documents in the interactive manner. Jupyter Notebook facilitates in-browser writing, editing, and execution of code. It also provides automatic syntax highlighting, indentation, and auto-completion. What makes Jupyter Notebook so popular is its ability to execute code from the browser with the results of computations attached to the code inline. In other words, notebook files serve as the complete computational record of a session with executable code and resulting objects. The Jupyter Notebook is internally a JSON file with the IPyNB extension. As JSON is a plain text format, the Jupyter Notebook can be version controlled and shared easily. The notebook shows green running text and a green icon next to running notebooks. Notebooks remain running until we explicitly stop it. Hence, only closing the notebook space is not sufficient to stop it. To shut down, delete, duplicate, or rename a notebook, check the checkbox next to it, then use the controls at the top of the notebook list. You can also use the same operations or directories on directories and files. To see all of your running notebooks, Click on the running tab at the top. The Jupyter Notebook has two different keyboard input modes. This means that the same key has different outcome depending on which mode the notebook is into. There are two modes, edit mode and command mode. You can enter edit mode of Jupyter Notebook by pressing enter or using the mouse to click on the sales editor area. The image on the screen is showing a notebook in edit mode. Edit mode allows you to type code. This mode also allows you to type text. Edit mode is indicated by a green cell border. When a cell is in edit mode, you can type into the cell like a normal text editor. When you are in command mode, you can edit the notebook as a whole, but cannot type into individual cells. You can enter command mode by pressing escape or using the mouse to click outside of a sales area. The image on the screen is showing notebook in command mode. Command mode binds the computer keyboard to notebook's command. This mode is indicated by a gray soil border. Command mode has a blue left margin as well. In this mode, the keyboard is mapped to a set of shortcuts that let you perform notebook and cell actions efficiently. A simple example of command mode operation is, suppose you are in command mode and you press C, you will copy the current selected cell. File menu is the first menu of the Jupyter Notebook. It has many important functionalities. Using file menu, we can create a new notebook or save a notebook. There is a save and checkpoint option under file menu. The checkpoint enables us to recover our unsaved work in the event of an unexpected failure. Every time we create a new notebook, a checkpoint file is created along with the notebook file. It is located within the hidden subdirectory of the current path called dot ipynb underscore checkpoints. The checkpoint file is also a dot ipynb file. By default, Jupyter Notebook will save the current notebook every two minutes to this checkpoint file. When you click on save and checkpoint, both the notebook and checkpoint files are updated. There is another file submenu called revert to checkpoint. Using this, we can revert to a checkpoint already saved. There is another file submenu called Download As. This helps us in exporting to HTML and PDF format as well as several other formats. All the formats can be seen from the menu under File Download As option.
as we can export a notebook to an HTML file, Jupyter Notebook becomes a convenient way for researchers to share their result with their peers. The second menu for the Jupyter Notebook is Edit menu. Using this menu, we can cut, copy and paste cells. This can also be used if you wanted to delete, split or merge a cell. Using Edit, we can reorder the notebook cells as well. It should be noted that some of the items in this menu may be grayed out or disabled. The reason for this is the disabled functionality does not apply to the currently selected cell. As an example, we can insert image in a markdown cell but not in a code cell. The view menu is useful for toggling the visibility of Jupyter Notebook's header and toolbar. We can also toggle line numbers within cells on or off using this menu. The view menu can also change the cells toolbar. The main submenus of the view menu are toggle header, toggle toolbar, toggle line numbers and cell toolbar. The cell toolbar has six submenus named none, edit metadata, raw cell format, slideshow, attachments and tags. The insert menu is just for inserting cells above or below the currently selected cell. This menu has only two submenus named insert cell above and insert cell below. You can see the expanded insert menu on the screen. Let us discuss the cell menu. The notebook consists of a sequence of cells. A cell is a multi-line text input field and its contents can be executed by using shift plus enter. The cell can also be executed by clicking either the play button of the toolbar or cell and then run in the menu bar. The execution behavior of the cell determines the cells type. There are four types of cells, code cells, markdown cells, raw cells and heading cells. The cell menu allows you to run a cell. We can also run a group of cells or all the cells using this menu. We can also change a cells type using this menu. The cell menu also provides the ability to clear a cells output. For example, if we are planning to share the notebook with others, we will mostly want to clear the output so that the next person can run the cells on his own. Using cell menu, we can run the code in different ways such as run and select below, run and insert below, run all, run all above, run all below. The element which instantiates a session and runs the code of a cell is called the kernel. The kernel menu is for working with the kernel that is running in the background. Here you can restart the kernel, shut down the kernel or change the kernel of your notebook. A kernel is a program that runs the user's code. IPython includes a kernel for Python code. When the kernel starts, the Jupyter Notebook passes the kernel to a connection file. This specifies how to set up communications with the front end. Jupyter Notebook supports more than a single programming language. The currently active kernel name of a Jupyter Notebook is visible at the top right of the working area. When you start a new notebook, the default kernel will be the last kernel selected. A widget is an eventful Python object that exists in the browser and is a user interface element. Example of a widget is a slider or text box in the UI of the notebook. Widgets are basically JavaScript code that can be added to the sales to make dynamic content using Python. For example, if we want to take the input from a user, we may create a text box widget in the Jupyter Notebook. The widget menu is used to create an interactive graphical user interface for the user. This menu also synchronizes stateful and stateless information between Python and JavaScript. The widgets menu is for saving and clearing widgets states as well. 
Jupyter Notebook supports a wide variety of widgets including but not limited to text box, images, button, outputs, animation, date picker, color picker. The last menu is called help menu. Using this menu, we can learn about the notebook's keyboard shortcuts. Also, we can do a user interface tool. We can read a lot of reference material using this menu as well. Jupyter stores a list of keyboard shortcuts under this menu. We have come to the end of this tutorial. In this video, we discussed Jupyter Notebook's autocomplete and IntelliSense feature along with menu shortcuts. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel using the subscribe button at the bottom right of your screen. See you in the next video. Happy learning.